Can you please address what you mean by pre-EFT? How is this different and what does it look like? Pre-EFT is done when you're not sure, the clinician is not sure about the safety that is felt between the partners. When there's a potential contraindication, if you have any sign that one partner has a felt sense of non-safety and that fear that they have of their partner's behavior or any sort of abuse at all, you slow way down and do pre-EFT to see if you can cultivate safety. So it's not an immediate decision. Usually twice in my career, it's been an immediate decision to end the first session, but usually it's not that clear and it's not that specific and takes some time to get a good assessment. So you slow down, you do basic couple therapy, basic containment therapy, and nothing that's evocative. For pre-EFT, we don't evoke because we can't afford to evoke until we're clear, as clear as an outsider like us can be that each partner has safety. I have no business evoking a person's vulnerabilities, even in a cognitive way, if I'm not clear that they have safety. And maybe tell me what you think of this, Jen, maybe from a tango perspective, it's tango move one, and maybe the first part of tango move two, which is just the assembly of emotion, Magda Arnold's elements of emotion from a more cognitive perspective. There's a cue or a trigger. There's a quick appraisal, right, wrong, good, bad, pain, pleasure. There's a quick body response in order to get a reappraisal before the meaning is made about my safety or not safety. And so you would do that in pre-FT. You would assemble. You're not going to say... I'm not going to deepen. You're not going to deepen. I'm thinking out loud because it's the first time I've put pre-EFT and the tango together. Tango move one, I think I would specifically focus more between the partners, how it says we track and reflect the present moment of tango move one, both within and between. And again, if I'm worried about each partner not having safety or one partner not having enough safety, I'm not going to focus too much on the within because that will be probably a little too vulnerable, a little too quickly. And so I'll be focused more on their interactional pattern. And then maybe from an assembly perspective, assembling of the affect, the more cognitive, what's the cue or the trigger, just naming it cognitively. What do I feel my body do? My quick appraisal is I can't handle this, or I don't like this. And, you know, go through Magda Arnold's assembly of emotion. You know, I just have to say your ability to teach pre-EFT made a huge difference in my practice because once you have this piece about safety, what it is, and then how to move on after you establish it or know that you can establish it, it's like, okay, these people aren't ready for EFT. And I know that. Mm -hmm. And so Mm that we did the pre-EFT, they need to go to individual first. If you know that, then the other couples you really go through the process. Yeah. And like pre of T gave me a way to frame why I can justify continuing to work with them because I'm seeing if I can cultivate safety. And as Steve Porges says, safety is the preamble to attachment. And so when he said that, I think ding, 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 that suddenly gave me more justification to stay in pre-EFT. I'm not doing anything but EFT. I'm just doing very little bits, very sliced, thin bits of EFT. That's all I do is EFT. So I'm still me. I'm still practicing humanistically. I'm going to be less experiential again, because that requires safety. I'm going to be systemic in my perspective. I'm going to remember Bowlby telling us that all behavior makes sense in context. Even people who have perpetrated abuse, all behavior makes sense in context. So I'm not accepting it. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying, oh, that's okay. I understand. We're saying, wait, talk to me about the primal panic you feel before you're behavior gets abusive because I can help with that primal panic. I can help with that desperation. I can help with that attachment protest that's now been extreme and abusive and can't continue. I can help you. Are you afraid as a clinician that you're going to inadvertently find yourself in really deep waters? One of the hallmarks of my pre-FT is often a second individual session for each partner. There are things I won't ask with the partner there. I don't want to go too deep too soon. I don't want the partner to think that I'm supporting the violence. I don't know the partner's view of how much they love their person and how burnt out or hurt or abused battered are they. So I still have so much to learn about it, this particular couple, but I will take a second and even at times a third individual session for each. In a way, this is going to sound too cognitive, but how disciplined for the partner who's perpetrating abuse, how committed are they to stopping it? So you can ask the sensitive questions to assess each partner's readiness, willingness, and ability to catch their behaviors to let you come close to their primal panic? How do they respond when you reference desperation and primal panic and certain behaviors are not acceptable and they're too extreme? And this tells me how desperate you feel, but it also has to stop. 
So when they will follow your lead and recognize that that behavior has to stop and can touch the primal panic and know that, yes, they have primal panic, like those are all indicators that you may be able to move on into EFT. Good people who are desperate from an attachment protest perspective do bad behaviors. And we want to help these good people who truly love their spouse or partner get unstuck from these really bad abusive behaviors that are not acceptable. So I say exactly these kinds of things. Do you only do pre-EFT individually? No, it's it's mostly for the couple. But of course, when those real stubborn stuck spots or tight spots, then I increase the individual sessions, but always in service of the couple. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.